Hello, friends, and welcome back to Midweek Encouragement. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, the levels I go to to make these videos. Yeah, I'm down on the floor. My biggest concern right now is getting back up off the floor. Good thing I'm recording this with my phone because I can call somebody to help me get back up off the ground. But the reason I'm doing this is look at this stack behind me. This beautiful stack of 75 boxes. Yes, we're getting ready to ship off our Operation Christmas Child uh, gifts. And I ask you that that you be praying over these. I know it's just a box, but it's not the box. It's where it's going and the difference it's going to make in somebody else's life, all because you had the opportunity to make a difference in someone else's life, which really, uh, <clears throat> um, I'm glad that you're here today. And in case you forgot, I love you, God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. But I did find an exception in that. There is something that you can do about the fact that I love you, God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. What you can do about it is go and love somebody else and because uh, that's just what we can do. God loves you, and there is nothing that they can do about it when you go and show love to others. Quick question for you, and it kind of relates to the shoebox idea. What is in your hand? Think about that for a minute. You go, well, I got my phone. I'm watching you. No, what's in your hand right now? Maybe it is your cell phone. Maybe it's the mouse to your computer. Whatever you're using to watch this, what is in your hand? But I think the deeper question would be, what is not just in your hand, but what can you do with what is in your hand to bring glory and praise to Jesus? Uh, when the beggar uh, that was lame, came to Peter and John as they were entering into the temple. Do you remember what they, the beggar said and what Peter and John said? Acts chapter 3, starting verse 4, Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I don't have. But what I ha do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. The man began to walk, immediately began to walk. He'd been lame since he was born, but now he's walking. The, the lame beggar uh, thought he was going to get a few coins. He got more than he asked for, more than he expected. He got new direction. It was what was in their hand. But then think about Moses. When Moses was uh, standing in front of the burning bush, God said to him, what's in your hand? Moses says, a sheep stick, his shepherd staff, right? And God says, well, what is it? As if God didn't know. Moses said, well, it's my sheep stick. And if a sheep is misbehaving, I take him, I whack him in the head. So it's my sheep stick. Give him some direction. Uh, <clears throat> and God said, well, throw it on the ground. So Moses throws it on the ground and it turns into a snake. And then Moses begins to do what I would have done, runs. But God says, pick it up, pick it up by the tail. And it turned back into a snake. It was what was in his hand. I'm reminded of a passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. says, And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, uh, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Now, now be careful that you don't overlook that one word that I emphasized in that passage there. Of all the spiritual gifts... This is one that God has given a number of people, the gift of helps. What is in your hand? It is the gift of helping. Apostles, prophets, teachers, and all the others can't do what they do without backup, without those working in the background helping, those using what is in their hand. Those, those working in the nursery of the church, they didn't miss a good message on Sunday. They gave a good message by watching somebody else's child so that that parent could be in the service hearing the message of Jesus Christ. Helping hands greet people as they walk into the building. Helping hands are active in the community without anyone seeing them. Uh, they, they might mow a neighbor's grass that has become very unruly, not knowing that the neighbor is sick. They may... Uh, <coughs> pull a trash can out from somebody's house or push it back to their house, knowing that that person just could use an extra hand. Helping hands are connected to open eyes, eyes that look for opportunities to show love. Helping hands take initiative. Several years ago, our Brahms store here in Cushing had it set up so that uh, you could go and fill your own coffee cup when you were there in the morning. And so, uh, I would go in and I of Sunday morning and I would uh, read some things from the paper, make some contacts, 
drink some coffee, and I would make friends. And before I left, I would always grab the pot and go around the whole room, not knowing these people, but making friendship, filling up coffee cups. Made some great friendships doing this. What's in your hand? And who and how have you filled someone else's cup today? God has been filling yours. The psalmist said, my cup overflows. You, you, you didn't do the pouring, God did. And since yours is overflowing, whose cup are you filling with the overflow? Patrick Lin Linnell uh, has recently written a book called Grace Bombs. And the subtitle is The Surprising Impact of Loving Your Neighbor. When I think of the title and 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 bombs, or, or what does the bombardier do? The bombardier doesn't just drop bombs. They take aim at a target that they're going to drop the bomb on. Jesus said these words in um, Luke 6, verse 27. He's, Jesus speaking, he says, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. If we become grace bombardiers, then we need to take careful aim and begin dropping love like it was confetti, zeroing in on our targets. Think about what it, what is in our hand and doing for others who may not even know they were the targets, especially those who have hurt us. You can't drop what you're not carrying. You can't pour from an empty pot. You, you can um, load up. How do, how, do we, how do we load up? I think it's done through gratitude. Gratitude for what God has been doing and is doing in your life. It's easy to drop stink bombs that are full of complaints of what, is going, what isn't going right. But we have to do, uh, all we have to do is focus on what is good and not what is bad. We just tend to focus on what is wrong so easily rather than what is right. What we focus on always tends to increase. And if we focus on all of the bad that is going on, then all we're going to see is negativity around us. But if we focus on what is good, then we can see the good uh, that we have. I have uh, heard it said that what we focus on tends to increase. Isn't that what Paul is saying in Philippians 4? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let, the, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Uh, do not be anxious about anything, but present your request. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends our uh, all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Again, what's in your hand? that can be used by God, it's your phone? Well, maybe you take that phone and you make a call to somebody today. Maybe you take that phone and you send a text of encouragement to somebody today. Maybe you're just going down the road and you wave at somebody today. It happens when your heart begins working with your eyes and you see beyond yourself because when we are a blessing to others, we will be blessed. Hey, Pastor Kevin here, and I can't wait to see you be praying for our boxes as they go and impact the life of a child in another world. Thank you.